hello, my name is David Walker from Great Walker Architects. Um, we were the architects for Milton Court, which was a new building in London uh, next to the Barbican. And the scheme really started as a um, combination of the requirements for the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, who were looking for a new world-class concert hall and theatre, along with the development potential for the site. Um, and we came up with a scheme which combined a new residential tower um, with the school um, facilities. Um, and the idea was that the city would um, appoint a developer who would uh, provide the new school facilities. Um, uh, and in return, they would um, have the development rights to develop the new residential tower. So it's quite a unique project in, a, in combining those two um, uh, issues, the two uh, requirements between um, a commercial uh, residential uh, development and um, providing new facilities for the school. The site is the first, was the first phase of the Barbican, which is a major redevelopment, postal redevelopment in the city of London. And it's quite a unique um, endeavor by the city to provide what is a very, very extensive um, redevelopment incorporating um, the Barbican Centre, which is a world-class um, performance facility, the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, which provides um, drama and music training for graduates and postgraduates, the Guildhall School for Girls, um, the Barbican Centre Arts uh, Complex, um, and all of those cultural and academic activities are um, in, uh, are contained within the um, scheme, which also includes residential, both high-rise residential and um, uh, lower-rise residential, and that's quite a, um, a was quite a groundbreaking project in its day, and is quite um, unusual for London, and particularly in the city of London, which is known for its commercial activities. So, in the heart of this commercial centre is one of the most um, uh, impressive arts and residential developments in the country and our site really acted, acted as the first phase of that and the opportunity was to re um, revision those mix of uses into a new scheme um, which included commercial residential which acted to fund the um, development of the school and the composition Barbican is famous for its use of um, exposed concrete, um, in situ concrete, quite innovative in its time. Um, the surface is a very textured surface um, formed by, um, by bush hammering the concrete and quite lambasted in its, uh, pre in its day, um, now quite admired I think. Um, and it has a very particular expression. And uh, in the new scheme we were um, setting out to both complement the Barbican and to comment upon the Barbican. So um, we uh, use the same mix of uses, a similar mix of uses, um, and compositionally we um, uh, introduced a high-rise residential building um, and um, organized it so that the main public functions were set at the Piano Noble in the same way that the Barbican is up on a high level. But um, in contrast, we enter the building at ground level, um, unlike the Barbican, and presented the foyer and their main entrances in a very clear way. Also unlike the Barbican, we, or also like the Barbican, and in contrast to the Barbican, we chose to utilize um, concrete, um, particularly in the surface treatment for the um, concert hall. It's quite a good material for its acoustic um, uh, abilities to, uh, to um, reduce the noise uh, within the concert hall, but also at, it's a very um, uh, contrasting material to the main, to the residential tower, which is treated in, in black, reflective glass. Um, but unlike the Barbican, we chose to use um, precast polished concrete, which we first developed in our project number one Coleman Street, which is a uh, office building not far from the site, where we um, used polished precast concrete panels to form a faceted facade 
um, which um, probably is the first use of polished polish concrete, certainly in the city of London, and uh, recent use within the UK. And that material was chosen because, unlike stone, we could achieve the geometric complexity of those faceted panels um, in a seamless way, uh, and which avoided um, jointing, which would have, which would have made been impossible um, in stone. That was quite a challenge to, to get approval for that um, with the local authorities, and to, to to do that, we went through an extensive sampling process. In fact, we we sam we prepared something like forty different concrete mixes for that, um, ranging from pure the purest white to a more variegated um, white. Uh, with, with black elements, and that's what we finally um, selected. So that when, when it came to Milton Court, we had already come to the material, the detailed mix of the material that we wanted, so we um, reused that exact recipe um, as, it, as developed um, for Coleman Street on Milton Court. We thought it would be easy because of that. However, uh, and the reason we thought it was simple bec is because unlike Coleman Street, where it's a faceted surface, at Milton Court it was a very, very flat, smooth, uh, uninterrupted surface. However, with polished concrete, that actually created its own complexities and challenges. And because it was so um, flat, so flush, and uh, highly polished, any surface flaws or variations that um, occurred within the concrete, either in the finishing process or in the mold, uh, tolerances within the mold would become very visible. So we were in we were working with tolerances of a few mil, and with uh, the requirements for the surface finish to be um, identical. And in fact, um, some of the samples um, didn't take the polish to the same degree as uh, some of the sample the panels didn't take the polish to the same degree as the adjacent samples, and we needed to repolish in fact, to create the homogeneous finish that you see on the building now. Yeah, the building structurally is a hybrid between uh, post-tension concrete uh, for the residential tower. Um, very useful because uh, we wanted to achieve a very slim floor dimension to maximize the um, space within the flats. Um, and so post station concrete was used for that. That um, uh, then also required um, edge, uh, edge uh, um, half and fixings to support the cladding panels. So that's quite a complex interface. Um, so that's a res residential tower. Uh, and the residential tower sits on top of the um, theater. And the theater then has a large concrete uh, transfer beam, which forms a proscenium arch in the theater to allow for the volume of the theater. And the concert hall is actually framed in steel um, because the long spans, uh, and in fact, it's box-in-box -box construction so that um, in order to achieve the acoustic requirements, there's a um, steel um, box which then sits within an external steel, steel box, then a facing of concrete block work, and then the precast concrete. So it's a mixed hybrid between um, steel and concrete for the structural frame. Yeah, the building was opened in uh, September, 25th of September, um, by the Lord Mayor. Um, the process uh, started as a uh, glimmer in our eye in 1999, in fact, and so it was quite a long uh, gestation period um, to, to um, realize uh, from, from that original concept to the scheme that's now been built. And on that path, there were many other options that were looked at from a uh, Reciting the school to, to complete a different site, to do an office building on the site. Unfortunately, this, the um, logic of the scheme that we developed um, uh, prevailed, and um, and yeah, it's been a design process of many, many, many years. It is very complex, actually, a very complex both in the kind of concept, uh, but also in the nitty-gritty of it. Um, because the scheme is so, the site is so tight, we were squeezing so much into it that the tolerances, the dimensional tolerances were extremely 
um, reduced. Um, and therefore, the engineering was really working at its, at its limits um, and it's quite, quite sophisticated, the, um, um, the engineering design. Um, and WSP, as I said, Ron Slade, WSP was the structural engineer who really um, resolved that, that, that complexity. Um, and I think the, the proof of that is that um, the acoustics have been tested to be really world class, and that was really the main goal for the scheme was to create this world class, uh, world class concert hall, and, and that's proven to be the case um, despite the dimensional tolerances that we needed to work within. One of the reasons the scheme took such a long time to come to fruition was the challenges, the planning challenges. Um, we understandably, the Barbican is a listed building now, they're uh, uh, unusually for the City of London. It is the majority of, of um, residential occupants uh, within the city. And so people were very concerned about what was going to be built in their backyard. Um, and that was further uh, made further complex by the fact that it was a tall building, a tall, tall high-rise building. So we had quite a complex um, uh, series of um, public consultation meetings with the local residents. Um, and I think we um, won them around eventually. Uh, and I think the key um, argument really was that in the city of London, where land values are so, so, so high, um, the um, likelihood of the scheme to re the building to remain as it was uh, was nil. Um, so the scheme was the site was very attractive to um, redevelopment, and had the school not been um, had the site not been earmarked for the school by the city, um, and had a developer not come forward who would uh, buy building the residential tower fund the school the site would have become an office building. Uh, and I think that's the key um, gain, really, is that rather than another office building within the city, um, it's quite uh, special to get a new cultural facility of this um, caliber.